All right, let's give it up for Tall one more time, guys. Woo! All right, and before I'm the last guy, closer, no pressure, just wanted to say, let's have another round of applause for everybody who performed today. You guys are awesome. You guys are great. It's been real. I've been laughing my ass off. I'm loving it. Let's hope I can do the same for you. All right. Time for the jokes. Time for the jokey, jokey jokes. God, that tall Arnold, what a tall glass of water he is, am I right? It's okay, I'm here to cool down the jets, ladies. Don't even worry about it. I always like to start off by telling a little bit about myself. I am from Berthet, Colorado. It's okay, I don't know where it is either. They're 18 years, no idea. And I, it's a very small town, and I think that you know that you're from a small town when like the epicenter of like fun and culture is the grocery store. <laughs> Truthfully, that was a day of fun for me and my friends. Before we got cars and could go places, I would call up my friends. But first off, if I asked a normal child, like who grew up with, I don't know, advantages in life, and asked them, hey, do you want to spend your afternoon walking to the grocery store with me? They'd be like, fuck no, but you call a kid from birth? Here's a, here's a, little, here's a little scene. Me calling my friend Morgan. Bring, bring. Picks up the phone. Hey, yo, motherfucker. <laughs> motherfucker, you want to go to the grocery store? We're both really white. I just want to like make this very clear. We're just a little racism. Bro. You want to go to the grocery store? And like I said, a kid in a normal town be like, hell no, but a kid from birth is like, fuck yeah! <laughs> hey, it's market, that's my shit! And we would go and just, like, we would just walk and then walk up and down the aisles, aimlessly. We wouldn't buy any, we had no money, we were 13. We would just walk and like hope that for somewhere on sale was like the price of whatever's in our pocket. Like, oh, I wish they had a soda on sale for a lit gumbo in the <laughs> sadness. It is, it's sad, that's what we did for fun. Birth It is so depressing, it was once called the Sarah McLaughlin commercial of Colorado. That's how bad we're in Colorado is. Like, thank God weed was legalized, guys. People would have died out of boredom if weed wasn't legalized. At least now they go to the grocery store like with meaning like, I need snacks. It's, it's hysterical. You see like a march around like 420 every day in Bertha. You're like, there are the stoners getting the Funyuns. But hey, drugs are no laughing matter, guys. I say this because I grew up watching little co commercial snippets called the Colorado Meth Project. And it was not a project where Colorado made meth. Colorado is one of the biggest places where people do meth. It's one of the most beautiful places to see nature and people need drugs. What the fuck? <laughs> but it's a, it's a real thing. Every other commercial was Colorado Meth Project showing people fucked up on meth. I don't want to see that shit when I'm watching Spongebob at three in the morning. No, I got sick of it. It's a problem for me. Not the drug abuse of other people, but the thing that I have to look at and using my brain, I'm not good at a lot of things, but I feel as though I can improve a lot of things through humor. And I was watching this one commercial that just took it way too far. So this kid is having an inner monologue. He's sitting on a bed in a creepy motel room without a shirt on, and he's thinking, if I had asked what meth would do to me, I wouldn't be asking. And then he turns and talks to this guy who's coming on screen who's bald, fat, and taking off his pants. He says, how much will I get for this? Obviously referring to meth. But in my mind, I'm like, what if we splice that with a Klondike bar commercial? <laughs> and get rid of the monologue, just have him sit down, say, how much will I get for this? Guy sits down next to him and then just, what would you do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> So that's why I don't have a lot of friends. But I love food. Food, as you can tell from my plump yet arousing composure, I do love the food. But my favorite part about food has to be drive throughs It's the laziest man's dream. I don't have to get out of the car and deal with the happiness of Chick-fil-A people. Because it's depressing. I'm in my underwear. I haven't showered. I haven't shaved. And I'm like, I want nine billion nuggets. It's just depressing. And. I love to pull pranks on the drive-thrus, and my all-time favorite prank 
was at a Chick-fil-A in Colorado with taxes and everything, if you ordered a Chick-fil-A sandwich meal with a lemonade, it costs $6.66. And it's Chick-fil-A. So I had a lot of fun with these little Mormon people that are working at Chick-fil-A. I rolled up pre-prepared with a mask on hand, and I rolled up and I'm like, thank you for using Chick-fil-A, what can I get for you? And I would reply with, yes, I would like a Chick-fil-A sandwich meal with a lemonade. And they're like, um, okay, your total's gonna be... And I would cut them off and say, I know the total. And I would roll up to the window, and what was I wearing? Nothing but a devil mask, and I would go... <laughs> Thank you, my name is Sam Kramer. Yeah, right? So, thanks so much for uh, coming and being a part of the uh, stand-up class. Thank you. Uh, let's take a few minutes. Let's take a five-minute break. <laughs> <laughs>